Um, I had been involved in research, engaged interaction with computers for more than 10 years now. And uh, it's actually a very interesting field to work in because there is so many things happening with gauge interaction in these years. We have seen more and more efficient equipment coming up and what used to be very difficult to uh, get a good calibration and have people to actually work with a computer is now something that you can almost do without training. So a lot of the technical problems are basically solved for the first generation of gauge interaction. What I would like to talk about today is some of the ideas that we have for what will become the next generation of gauge interaction with computers and I would like to talk about some of the challenges that we still have when people are learning how to use a computer by gauge interaction. Also, we have seen that quite a lot of people professionals working with people that have neurological uh, diseases, ALS and so on, they are not aware of the potentials in gauge interaction. And actually, that was how I got involved in all this. I got an email, we have a mailing list for researchers being interested in, in a gauge and eye movement and one person from South Africa he sent an email to this list and he was asking for help because his father had got a brain stem stroke and he could not speak anymore so he was uh, asking if we could get an eye mouse something that, that his father could use to communicate with and a couple of hours after he had posted this request he got a reply from a doctor at a department of neurology and this doctor basically told him that well I'm sorry there are no systems that are accurate enough for you father to uh, choose uh, among small letters so what you will have to do is ask him to look left or right or up or down under certain conditions and use that as a yes or no. I was a little bit uh, upset because how come that this doctor did not know about the potentials of gaze interaction this was way back in uh, 2002 okay but still that at that time we had some very very good equipment and uh, people with ALS was using this already uh, Biwa had his system for a couple of years with, uh, at that time <coughs> So we sat together some of uh, the researchers and we uh, decided that we want to start a network on gaze interaction. And we applied for some money from uh, the EU Commission and we got funding for five years for a network that we have named COGAME, it stands for Communication by Gaze Interaction. And there is more than 20 partners all over Europe involved in this. We even have a partner in Tokyo. But the idea of this network is to combine researchers and communication centers. For instance, uh, we have the A Center in the uh, UK and we have Danish Center for Assistive Technology called Yelpemiddel Centralen. And we have a Swedish uh, communication uh, center at Salzkreina University Hospital also involved. So we meet uh, every year and we have exchanges of researchers and what I'm going to present to you today is some of the ongoing work that we have here in this network. First of all, as you probably know, GAIS tracking equipment have been available for more than 20 years 
and we now have more than five companies that provides us with gauge communication systems. They are in a price range between 8 and 20,000 euro and uh, as we have heard from some questions here today that may still be one of the most uh, important problems for us to solve namely how can we reduce the price of these gauge tracking systems so that even more people can enjoy the pleasure of being able to uh, control their computer and communicate with their friends and family via gauge interaction. The majority of the systems we have seen so far are so-called fixed systems, meaning that they have to be positioned in front of the user. It can be, for instance, on a laptop with a small video camera here and infrared lights here or it can be all integrated into one big monitor as the Toby system here where we have the camera here and lights here and an on-screen keyboard up here. In the research team we have several partners working on improving the mobility of gaze tracking. We have a partner in Czechoslovakia they are developing a gaze tracker that you can actually mount on a pair of glasses which will give you the opportunity to be completely mobile and uh, they are expecting to release this equipment within half a year. It's going to be quite moderate in price but it will not control the computer in the normal way that we use gauge interaction because this is more of a relative control so you will look to the right and then you will push the mouse a little bit to the right and then in order to aiming you might have to look several times so it will not follow your eye and be wherever you are looking but it's like pushing the mouse around on the screen like you would put push it around with your hand using a normal mouse. But since it's quite cheap and since it's extremely mobile, it may be an interesting new option for some users. Also we have seen the Toby system, they have come up with a nice uh, and lightweight mobile uh, new equipment, the P10 model. And we have partners in our network trying to develop gauge tracking on very small cameras, cameras that you can buy in uh, normal uh, video stores. I will return to the issue of why it's so important that we see if it's possible to use standard video equipment instead of special hardware when we want to have gaze interaction. The advantage of gaze interaction is that it can actually become rather fast. Once you get well trained, you may type more than 10 words per minute. And this is compared to some of the uh, other input systems that we have for uh, alternative communication quite acceptable. It's of course not fast in the sense that it's compatible to the speed of normal people talking but when you compare it with the alternatives 10 words per minute are absolutely one interesting uh, milestone to reach when you design gauge interaction systems. It's also quite easy to learn. It takes probably a couple of hours. We have done experiments with uh, students and they seem to master it after a couple of hours. 
if we use dwell time where you have to look at a button for a certain period to activate it, people have to learn to stay on that button. And they also have to learn that they cannot just look everywhere without activating something. So they will have to be more careful with their gaze movements than they would normally be if they were just looking around on a computer screen. But this is something that can be learned within a couple of hours. One of the major advantages of gaze interaction is that there are no muscle strain associated with it. So people can actually sit and work for several hours which I don't think is uh, possible with any other input device as such, except of course from a light rider if you still have your uh, finger movements. But even people with uh, a head mouse, they tend to get pain in the neck if they have been typing for a couple of hours. So uh, I think that this is one reason why we should uh, introduce gaze interaction and gaze tracking at an earlier stage than we probably do today. I think we could have, we can avoid people getting uh, repetitive strain injuries even in the arm or in the neck if they get the chance to use gaze communication at a stage where they may not actually need it yet, but where they will then become acquainted with the way of communicating with the eyes and they will uh, benefit from the fact that it's not so hard on their bodies to use this kind of interaction. As I'll come back to later, when we're talking ALS and MND, it's interesting that we can uh, use it at uh, a lot of the different stages that a person with ALS may go through. It can give access to a range of normal PC applications. You may need some magnification tools that will uh, enlarge small sections of your screen so that you can actually hit the small button. And some of the systems, the Erica system and the uh, system from Quick Glance, have very uh, elegant uh, support for doing this kind of magnification. Which means that you can basically control a complete and normal uh, window environment with some patience, of course, and you may have to select uh, a couple of times in order to activate. Uh, the, the functions, but I've seen some users that become so skilled at using these magnification tools that they can almost work in a Windows environment at the same speed that I'm working in my, at my computer. And finally I would mention that because there is a lot of research and development in the gaze communication area, I believe that uh, you will see a lot of uh, improvements within the next uh, three to five years and you will see a lot of new uh, products coming up from, uh, from the manufacturers that include these improvements. There are some disadvantages with gaze interaction also. And, uh, the most important one probably is that the hardware is still quite expensive. It may not be a problem so much here in Scandinavia, but we have uh, of course talked with a lot of our uh, European colleagues and they say that for instance in the UK it's very very difficult to get support for this kind of system. So. If you don't have the money to buy it yourself, you are basically lost or, or locked in in the uh, final stages of, of an ALS, for instance. 
It's not possible to select small objects unless you have these magnification tools. And some of uh, the magnification tools have actually been patent protected, so it's not easy just to uh, develop new uh, magnification tools here. And, uh, and some people find it difficult to use the magnification tools also. So we are still waiting for uh, a new design of uh, windows that will allow us to zoom in the windows and I believe this is something that they're working at at Microsoft at the moment. Gaze tracking is sensitive to sunlight and this means that it's difficult to take the systems uh, outside and uh, even indoor you may have to uh, shield the windows off uh, and you may have to be aware of where you are sitting uh, and where the sun is coming from and so on. People who have bifocal glasses or have uh, hard contact lenses can also get uh, into troubles when being uh, tracked with uh, an eye tracker. And uh, sometimes it can help to tilt the glasses a little bit or move the head. Um, but at other times you will find users with so strong eyes or with a special, uh, strong glasses or special coating of the glasses that it's, it's, it's very, very difficult to get a good calibration with them. And then finally, I said before that it it takes a couple of hours to learn, yes, but this was something we found among motivated young students. A couple of hours of practice may well be too much for some people that are suffering from a serious progressing disease and uh, maybe have problems with uh, depression or, or motivation in general. So for them, it may well be that they are um, giving up after having tried less than the two hours that would normally be required to learn to master this. They say that this is not for me and I will never learn it. Well then we believe it's very important that the communication specialists have an example of good case stories that they can present to this user and, and convince them that yes, it may be hard in the beginning, but eventually you will learn it, just show patience. Actually, when it comes to the effectiveness of gaze tracking, we have been extremely uh, inspired by the system that Biro and a lot of other people with ALS in, in Denmark are using, namely the uh, row column scanning where Biro will lift his eyebrows when we are in the right rows. This system has some uh, qualities that we would also like the uh, technical gaze tracking system to have and um, first of all it has a very high availability everyone can draw the alphabet on a piece of paper and start using it you can have an instant operation it may take some time to train your uh, helpers or family members but uh, if they get support by looking at this piece of paper, they can do it almost right away. It's very robust, it doesn't break down, it's very mobile, you can take it with you everywhere, it does not require power or anything, you can even take it outdoor in sunshine. I've seen Biwa sitting on a beach with his wife communicating with uh, with this uh, system and we have sand, wind and sand flying around their heads and you would definitely not be able to take a com computer with you out on a uh, sunny uh, sandy beach and then start doing uh, gaze 
communication. Then it's affordable and uh, it can be used at all the stages of uh, an uh, ALS uh, progression and it's uh, relatively easy to learn. So this is the ideal kind of, of gauge communication system that we constantly remind ourselves this is the qualities that we would like the gauge trackers also to have. We would like a communication system to follow a person with ALS through the various stages of the uh, disease. And while you might have a uh, light rider and other systems to help you if you have uh, lost your voice but you still can control your fingers and, and, and uh, arms, the, uh, the, 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 the period where you would really need or would like to use gauge interaction for your computer, that is when the control of your arms and legs starts to deteriorate. And then you can actually use it all the way down to uh, a final state where you uh, only have very, very uh, weak muscle movement. You don't even have eye movements. Then you may be uh, helped by EMD or blood flow communication as we saw it from uh, Hitachi uh, this uh, afternoon. <coughs> User requirements. Well, some of the problems that we have uh, experienced and what users of gauge communication systems they often ask for are improvements in the calibration. They don't want to sit and waste a lot of time calibrating by having to look at 15 points. If it's enough just to look at a couple of points to get an accurate calibration, then they prefer to do that, of course. If you can save your calibration so that you can use it, you don't have to do it every time you get back to the computer, that's also a good help for you. <laughs> it's also very good to have resizable uh, buttons and grids. It may be that on a good day you can control a full purity keyboard, but then you may get tired or you may get uh, uh, bad calibration or you may get small problems with the lights that makes it uh, less accurate and then you would very much like to have larger buttons here and uh, the possibility of having your uh, screen all filled out with uh, large buttons. You would like to have a choice of output style. Sometimes you want to be able to uh, have a synthetic voice that will say what you have just written and at other times you would like to have the possibility of just typing an email for instance. Some users would like to have uh, several different languages like uh, Arne Lukke Larsen, who is still working as uh, a professor at Odense University, and he is writing uh, scientific papers in uh, English. And of course, he would like to be able to switch between Danish and English quite uh, fast and without having to call his helpers. So this should also be supported by the system. Some users would like to have uh, a choice of symbols or text output. In, uh, in the UK, for instance, it's very uh, popular to use the Bliss communication system and some users who don't master uh, a standard alphabet, they prefer to type on or to communicate by looking at pictures and symbols instead. Then some people have concern of the safety of 
gaze tracking. As you may know, it works by sending infrared lights into your eyes and uh, it's actually quite high amounts of lights being sent into your eyes, just that we cannot see it because our eyes are not sensitive to infrared light. But some people can feel it, they feel like their eyes are drying out and they are concerned that this could probably harm their eyes if they use it years after years, after years and, uh, and, and, and several hours a day. So we are now trying to measure how much infrared light do these equipment actually shine into people's eyes and it, it seems that we are not even close to any critical uh, limits uh, with the systems that you can buy on the market today. So even though it may get uh, give you dry eyes every now and then, it, it should still be safe at least from, from our uh, first experiments and calculations. Then finally, positioning and mounting is uh, of course very, very uh, relevant. Can you mount the system on a wheelchair? Can you mount it uh, when you're laying in the bed? Uh, is it possible to sit and work with it uh, in your office so that you can have your normal uh, office computer uh, with all the uh, programs, uh, software you have on that computer also? Or is it just something that uh, have to uh, be a very, very limited uh, uh, tool for communication that you, you can use in only very stri uh, restricted uh, surroundings. This is, this is really important. More user requirements. Yes, one thing that comes up again and again is why do you only have so boring systems to use? Why is it only uh, communication and uh, can't we get some games? So uh, we have started to make uh, games also. Games that, uh, for instance, uh, are uh, possible to play on the internet. Here we have a chess game that you can play by gaze interaction. And one of my students, he just won a prize at the last co-game camp we had uh, 14 days ago, where he would uh, present a game that he has been developed that people can use by gaze interaction. And I would like to show you uh, how this uh, game works. So, uh, Chaco, could you say a few words about your application, please? You are one of the yeah. possible winners. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, uh, I did a game called Strong Eyes, and uh, it's a two dimensional zoom game seen from a first person view. Uh, the goal is to, uh, to uh, collect golden nuggets and avoid some rocks. One is that we want young people to become involved in this area and start uh, using uh, um, or, or developing uh, games for, for, for people with special needs. But also, if we can get the game industry interested in, in gaze interaction, and if they can see that this could probably be the next way to control a Nintendo, or if they could make arcade gaming uh, machines, this could really create a big new market for games interaction, which could then make the prices of the equipment go down. I won't go through all of these um, requirements, just that uh, I think I have covered most of them. Um, yes. Here we have a list of typical communication speeds. 
and um, even though I writing is um, faster than some other uh, alternative communication systems that are at two to eight uh, word per minute, there is a long distance up to uh, 150, 250 word per minute, which is the speed you use when you normally talk, or the 65 words per minute that people can type on a standard uh, security keyboard if they can use their finger. We can compare it to uh, people using an SMS. We see people with the uh, multi tap method on a uh, mobile phone typing at 8 words per minute. If they use the T9 algorithm, the one that predicts your words, they can get up to around 20 words per minute. There have been some uh, recent experiments where um, we have been able to write up to 25 words per minute with gaze interaction using a special system called Dasher. And um, this system is, uh, is, is quite difficult to learn, but it is actually the fastest way that you can communicate with your eyes today. And if you take good time practicing on this system, you will be able to reach the 25 words per minute, which is acceptably high. We know that uh, from people who have uh, enjoyed uh, being member of, of uh, communities that have uh, radio telegraphic, uh, more so communication, that they have to reach a level of 25 to 30 words per minute if they are really uh, to have a good Saturday night, uh, throwing jokes and enjoying the company of each other, they, uh, they have to be able to type uh, at this speed. We have developed a system called Gaze Talk, together with uh, four people with ALS in, in Odense in Denmark. And it's specially meant for supporting uh, the uh, uh, various stages of ALS. It has uh, different functionalities. You can type, you can send email, there's a web browser, there's a music and video player, and uh, you can have access to both uh, Danish, English, German, Finnish, uh, even Japanese within the same uh, system and it, it uses type to talk via the uh, synthetic speech uh, that are built into to, uh, the Windows environment or with the voices that you can buy. I'll just like to show a small sequence on how this system works. The technology has been available for more than 20 years and it is still improving considerably. It supports severely disabled people such as people with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis who have lost their ability to control muscle movements. They can communicate with their family just by gazing at a particular part of a computer screen with characters or commands. Gaze Talk has been designed in close collaboration with four people with ALS. It has a very limited number of on-screen keys and may be operated even with highly disturbed gaze control. It features type to talk. I can type what I like to say by gazing at the buttons on the screen. I can type what I like to say by gazing at the buttons on the screen. Besides writing, the user can also do several other things by eye gaze alone. It is possible to send email or to do web browsing. It is also possible to play video. or to play music.
and if wanted to, read electronic documents smoothly. Games Talk is now available as free, were in Danish, English, Italian, Chinese and Japanese. We have done uh, several uh, experiments with uh, Gaze Talk and we basically found that uh, typing by gaze is equally fast as typing by head. We see a strong improvement from day one to day two, but if the user can master uh, a mouse, then uh, mouse typing is faster than both head and gaze typing. We also see that people have quite a high error rate uh, when they start using uh, eye typing. It's higher than head mouse typing, but both of them have a very significant drop from day one to day two. And compared to uh, mouse control, we see that uh, on uh, the third or fourth day, we expect that, that head and probably also uh, gaze uh, control will be just as uh, error-free as, as normal mouse control. When we ask our subjects to compare gaze and head and the mouse, we can see that the satisfaction with gaze interaction is uh, smaller than the one we had with head and with mouse. We can see that they believe it to be just as uh, efficient as, as head interaction but still, there are some room for improvements uh, when it comes to the satisfaction with gaze control. And I mentioned before that some of the problem can be that you forget to keep looking at uh, the buttons that you want to activate, or you move your eyes away too uh, fast from the button before it was actually activated. Dasher was the very fast system that I mentioned before. And you can download that from uh, the University of Cambridge homepage and from uh, Cogain's uh, homepage also. At Cogain's homepage, you can get freeware copies of both Dasha and Gaze Talk. But Dasha are now included in Gaze Talk, so you can actually start Gaze Talk and then launch Dasha within Gaze Talk. And we did that because we wanted people to realize or see the potential, the possibilities of this fast typing dasher systems and system. And if, if any of you are interested in sort of cutting edge typing systems, I really recommend that you go in and start playing with the dasher system. It may help some of your users, especially the young users. It's quite difficult to explain what's going on here, but it actually predicts what you're going to say and it have the box sizes here being dependent on the probability of the next most likely character. One other thing that we're looking at is how to drive the cost of gaze tracking down. And uh, this can actually be done by using components off the shelf or components you can buy in any videos and, and uh, uh, electronic store. Here we use a, a standard uh, Sony uh, video camera and two lights that comes with the Sony camera for an infrared uh, night vision. And this is the reflections we get in uh, the eyes of these uh, lamps. And these reflections are of a high quality, so we can actually use this for developing uh, eye tracking systems that will then run on a standard laptop computer and a PC. This is also supposed to become freeware uh, within a year or so from now. One other thing we're working on is uh, how to design a video uh, communication system so that you would actually be able to see the faces of other people that you are communicating with. It will be like a chat system. You are not typing on buttons, but you're looking at the channels of the other people that are in your group. And actually you can see that uh, right now you are looking at this person and at her 
computer, she'll see that there is a dotted frame around the picture of you. So she will know, ah, he is looking at me. We have uh, established a contact and you will have the sound from her room being the sound that you will hear uh, at the highest level. So this is also a way to control how to uh, listen to uh, nine or ten people at uh, one time. How can you switch fast between them? We are doing experiments with EMG switches because it turns out that if you can avoid the dwell time and just continue to click even at uh, the latest states of, of ALS, you can actually become faster than having to dwell for half a second on the buttons every time you want to type a character. So by combining this system, which is basically just uh, an EMD sensor that you put on your forehead and plug into the computer and use this just as the click function on your mouse, then you can get faster typing speed than you will have if you were just using uh, dwell time activation. And also, even if you don't have eye movements left, you can still, in some cases, use the EMD switch in a row scanner, a columns uh, fashion. We have done experiments that show that if you do combine EMD and gaze interaction, you get more than 20 work per minute in our system and uh, others have shown that if you use EMG uh, for with a jaw clicking where you just bite a little bit instead of throwing this is actually also faster than just uh, using uh, the forehead EMG the, the, the jaw bites is a little bit faster than, than, than lifting your eyebrows If you are interested in more information, I strongly recommend that you go to this webpage. It's called www.cogain.org and here you will see uh, a list of uh, gauge tracking equipment. You can read about the prices and uh, you will get uh, information on what their uh, special uh, features are. You can download some of the software that I have shown you here today and you can download uh, reports on, for instance, uh, user requirements for gauge interactive systems. Thank you for your attention.